What could be worse than a plague of locusts? How about an invasion by so-called murder hornets? Murder hornet? The murder hornet. The murder hornet. The murder hornet. The murder hornet. Murder hornet. Murder hornet. Murder hornets. They could decimate bee populations across the U.S. And now, we fight back. Okay, so here's the basic design that I've got all drawn up. It's going to be this curved dagger where the blade is going to curve in one direction and the handle curves in the opposite direction. I'm not sure exactly what you would call this, but I think it looks cool. Uh, we'll have a guard separating the blade from the handle. And then the murder hornet is gonna go here into the handle like so. There's lots of room for experimentation and different things. Maybe when we're done, it looks nothing like that. I don't know. I'm doing it out of this hunk of 1095 steel and I've got this cut out of the handle that barely fits, but fits. Believe it or not, that was my first ever freehand grinding of a knife. And I've got to say it came out pretty decent. I do have a little bit of work to do to kind of even up the bevels. I'm going to do that with some uh, sandpaper. Same with the, uh, the top bevel. I think this is called something. I don't know what. Let me know down in the comments. And I'm going to add some details that are really going to make this look like a tough, bad knife fitting of having a murder hornet in the handle. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so essentially this dagger is just a long series of moments where one wrong move and I can mess the whole thing up. And in keeping with that theme, the next thing I wanna do is cut some saw teeth into the spine of the knife. I've done some practicing with this piece of steel right here and the results are okay, not perfect. First, I'll cut with the bandsaw to kind of rough out most of that material. And then I'll come back with a series of files, a rotary grinder, some sandpaper and some other things to really clean it all up and refine those individual saw teeth. Again, this is totally nerve wracking. If I mess this up, I have to go all the way back to zero with this knife, start from scratch. I mean, I'm not nervous, I'm just really nervous. <laughs> okay, let's just dive right in and do it.
Okay, so I've had a whole bunch of progress since I checked in about two days ago, and I was really apprehensive then about cutting in the saw teeth along the spine of the knife, and I can say that it went pretty well. All the practice that I did on that scrap plate of steel, it really paid off way smoother and a lot faster than what I anticipated, so I'm glad I took the extra time to really spend an entire day kind of figuring out my technique before I moved on to the actual knife itself. I've got some large scratches and some of the tooling marks from laying out the saw teeth. I wanna clean those up before I move on to the heat treat and then really it's just a matter of finishing the handle and putting it all together. Okay, let's finish this thing. Okay, well the blade is in the oven doing the temper cycle right now, and as you saw, the heat treat went pretty well. Um, it skated a file, which means it's hard, it didn't cut in. So now the next step is to start on the handle, and specifically putting the murder hornet into the handle. I'll cut the epoxy into a circle, cut the matching profile into the base of the handle, and then epoxy that into the handle. And then in order to hold that in place, I'm going to do a steel wrap that's going to get mortised into the handle, go around the murder hornet. I'll use a piece of brass and rivet that into the wood. This is the last difficult step of doing this knife. This is a bunch of stuff that I've never done, so hopefully it will not be a total cluster fudge. This is a clean show. We're not gonna use the other word, but you know exactly what I mean. Okay, so I spent a good portion of last night working on the steel wrap for the handle, and I just can't get it to fit up very good. I got it close. Let me see if I can get it to focus here. As you see, there's just some gaps, and it's not fitting up the way I'd like it, so. 
that's out of here. So I ran back to the steel yard and I bought some more steel bar. The steel bar I bought is actually thicker than what I was working with that I cut off from that steel plate. So that was a no-go. So I started looking around the shop for something that maybe I could use in its replacement. And I actually found something that I was able to cannibalize off of one of my tools. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Okay, so I actually, took this off of one of my tools. I don't wanna say which one. If you can guess which tool I cannibalize this from, just leave a comment down below and the first person to get it right, I'll send you a Johnny Builds t-shirt. It's super, super flexible and I think I can make this work to wrap around the handle. There's gonna be some other challenges but I think I can make this work, so let's find out. Well, I knew going into that, that was gonna be sort of an experiment and there was a good chance it wasn't gonna work. While I was able to get it to form to the handle of the knife really well, the problem was is this material is so thin that whenever I welded in the little spikes, there's just not enough material for those welds to bite into and they keep just breaking off. So, you know, it was an experiment, it didn't go well, so we're just gonna scrap it, move on. I still think the knife looks really good without the steel wrap. As a matter of fact, I think the steel wrap could have even come out a little bit clunky and unrefined. Now, really, all I got left to do is a couple finishing steps and put this knife together and we can get to that final reveal. God, it's hot in here. Woo!